Hey Divine Ones, uh, it's Jerome Bragg. So I'm gonna come again and do another live video uh, and answer another one of your questions that I received. I received this question a few times from several different people. Uh, and that is what, what suggestions I have for people who don't have a passion for life uh, and who are hiding it, finding it hard to kind of find their joy. Uh, and this is really, really important. Um, one, because um, First, I want to tell you why joy is important, and then I want to tell you kind of what disconnects us from our joy, and then I want to tell you how to kind of find your passions and your joy for life. Um, so, just giving a little time for some of you all to tune in, because again, I got a, I got a uh, this question a lot from a few of you all. So again, I'm answering the question: what to do if um, some of my suggestions for what to do if you don't know what your passions are and you're not connected to your passion for life and you don't have a connection to joy for life. So the first reason is to understand why joy is so important, right? Why having passions and living a life based in joy and, and focusing and following your joy, which you probably hear a lot in spiritual circles. If you're a, you know, if you're a follower here, then you're, you know, you're a follower of spirituality, spiritual growth is important to you. Metaphysics is probably important to you as well. So you've probably heard this conversation a few times about following your joy and the importance of living your joy. So I want to talk to you a little bit about why that's important. Joy literally is the basis and the purpose of life. Um, when I used to do medium work, as I worked, you know, one of my intuitive gifts is mediumship. And when I used to work as a medium, um, I've talked to hundreds of souls on the other side, and I can't tell you how many times, probably about 90% of the time when I talk to souls, they would stress the importance for their loved ones that were still here on this side to really start to live a life um, that felt good to them and that breathed joy through them because that was why we come here. That is literally why the soul chooses to incarnate here. We are literally physical manifestations of God here for the experience of joy. We come for the experience of joy. It is literally the purpose of life. And the number one reason when I used to do uh, intuitive readings for people, not the number one reason, but the number one question, when I used to do intuitive readings for people was what's my purpose? And that's literally your purpose. Your purpose is not um, a job or it's not a business or it's not um, some type of obligation or responsibility put on you, you know, by source, there's nothing like that. Because again, you are a physical manifestation of God. So there's no obligation or responsibility placed on you. Um, and there's nobody that you're, you know, there's nothing that you have to do here to try to deem yourself worthy of anything because you are worthiness itself. You're literally here for the joyous experience of your, the joyous experience of it. You're here to expand your being through the experience of joy. And so that's why, one, why joy is so important is because it's literally the purpose for your life. Um, and it's also what you're made of. You know, when you're saying you're a physical manifestation of, of source or of God energy, a large portion of what God energy is, is joy. That's how God feels. You know, if you talk to many of us who have had near-death experiences uh, or people who have um, intuitive abilities where they're able to feel the energy of someone, like the true energy of somebody's soul, what that actually feels like is love and joy, right? It feels like love and joy. That's And many people that have gone, crossed over to the other side and had near-death experiences will tell you the energy of God often feels to them like joy and love. So that's what you're made of. You are literally made of the energy of joy and you are here to experience the energy of joy. Uh, again, if you all hear the train in the background, I told you all the last video, I live by a train. So occasionally it's gonna, you'll hear it passing. So um, it's passing right now. So if you hear a horn blowing and, and, and a loud sound, that's the train going. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of doing live videos. You never know what's going to happen in the background. Uh, but that's really what's going on, right? You are literally the experience um, and the energy and the source of joy. So when we talk about why it's important, 
you cannot, in order to have a well life, and I'm not just talking about to be healthy in your body, and I am talking about that as well, but not just to be healthy in your body, but to actually have an experience where your life functions well and you have a sense of fulfillment, you have to be connected to joy and not just joy on the margins, right? Not just joy occasionally or, you know, every blue moon or whatever, but joy is literally not, it's not supposed to be the margins. It's supposed to be the entire page in which you write the story of your life. Joy is the page in which you are supposed to write the story of your life on, right? It's the foundation for you, supposed to be the foundation for your life. So this is why it's really important to discover what breathes joy through you, what your passions are, what you get excited about, what you love, what um, what's really fun for you and what's really pleasurable for you. You are supposed to experience that. Now, why we get disconnected from that, right, and why so many of us don't really know what makes what why what we're passionate about and know what breathes life through us is because we grew up in cultures and societies that don't prioritize joy and that they don't they condition us more so out of the experience of joy that make us make us believe that joy is something something frivolous. Um, that you can experience in the margins and that'll be enough instead of it's a vital nutrient for your survival. And what I know actually as um, when I was working as a medical intuitive and a channel, what I know is that as I've looked in people's energy fields and I can see their um, their energy, their, soul, their auras and their souls and all of that, what I know is that when you get the more you get disconnected from joy, the more life force energy starts to drain out of you. And that's when the more life force, when, when joy is really depleted in the body, when the feeling, the vibration of joy is depleted in you, um, it sends a message to the body that this worth, this life is not worth living and the body starts to, to, uh, begin the exiting process, like the, the transition process, right? So if the purpose of life is joy and you're not experiencing joy for a long, like chronically, what it tells the body is that this life, there's no longer a purpose for this life. So the body begins to die. And that's when a lot, that's where a lot of our illnesses and diseases come from. It's not the body punishing us or some betrayal. It's literally, we've been sending the, um, the message to the body that this life is not worth living. And so it's time. So we're, so our soul begins to exit. Right. And so this is why joy, I'm just saying all this first so that you really understand joy is very important. It's not, um, some frivolous thing to, 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 uh, keep procrastinating or to put in the margins. It's supposed to be the very centralized focus of your life. It's supposed to be the central focus of your day is joy, the experience of joy, not to experience joy 100% of the time because we are also, you know, we, we live in a world of duality and a, a world of contrast. So you need those experiences to help you clarify what you really want for yourself and what you no longer want for yourself and to help you grow. So every single moment of your life is not going to be a very passionate or joyous moment. But if you look over the arc of your life, the collection, the, the greater collection of your life should feel like joy. The majority of your life should feel joyous. Now, I had to learn this the hard way. Right. This isn't something that I was like, I mastered all throughout my life. I had to learn this the hard way because this is what, what I learned when I had my near death experience. And, uh, when I was diagnosed with AIDS and kidney failure, the reason why diseases showed up for me was because I had been living such a life that was disconnected from joy. My life was disconnected from joy because I had a lot of shame around my being. Um, and I also was living a life of just distress and overwhelm and suppression and, um, you know, running after money and not after, you know, doing things for the money or the obligation or the responsibility out of them instead of what I really loved to do and what was really calling me. So um, I had to learn that. I had to really, my whole journey to healing was about reconnecting myself to joy. Right. And it was a learning curve. So I want to share with you a little bit about, you know, what I learned. But but before that, why we get disconnected from joy is really either we're traumatized. We have some type of trauma uh, in, in our early childhood that disconnects us from it. Because if you look at babies, you know, babies understand this very well. When we come when we first come into the world, um, we un, we are very connected to this understanding that life is about joy. And this is supposed to be a fun experience for us. If you look at babies, they are all about the fun. 
they are laughing a lot. They are, they are, they see the world through eyes of wonder and excitement. Um, they know that if something's not joyous, this is, they're supposed to feel good and they'll start to cry out if they don't feel the sense of joy and fun in the world. They, we, when we come in as kids, we know we play a lot more when we're kids. Life is about play. It's about fun. This is how your life is supposed to be structured. But we get socialized to believe, oh, that's kid stuff. Now you're starting to grow. You need to start to grow up and you need to leave all that alone. But if you look out in nature, Look at our animal brothers and sisters, right? That those are souls in animal bodies. Their predominant life is playing and having fun. <laughs> it's like playing, having fun, eating and rest, right? That's like their predominant way of living. And that's why they hold such a high vibration. Also, the more joy you get in your life, the higher you raise your vibrational frequency. And, and if you know anything about metaphysics and the law of attraction, the higher your vibrational frequency, the more stuff you manifest, the better your life uh, is, the more money you can, the more experience of prosperity and abundance you have, um, all of that. So this is really, really, really um Important. The experience of joy is very important. It raises your vibration. It keeps you healthy. It keeps your body healthy and it helps you fulfill your purpose. Joy is actually a spiritual guide as well. The more you follow your joy, it will lead you into your purpose in the world. It will lead you into understanding what type of work you, you that, that most allows you to experience your gifts and serve your gifts to the world and help humanity in whatever way you, you want to do that. Um, joy is, is, it's so, so, so important. So it is very important for you um, to take time to discover what breathes joy through you, what breathes life through you, what you enjoy, what your passions are. Um, and the only reason why you may not understand that is just because of how you, how we're taught and what you may have seen modeled in your house. You know, what was your parents' experience with joy? What did you see growing up? Were your parents really joyful beings? Did they talk to you about joy a lot and finding your joy and building your life around joy? Probably not. You know, most people's parents probably didn't. There were probably a few of us who did, but most people's parents probably did not. Our school systems definitely did not. They did not necessarily teach you how to build a life based on joy. We were taught mostly how to build a life based upon money and um achievements and prestige a lot instead of what actually you're really super passionate about. You know, you hear a lot of times, you know, when your kids are growing up, they may say, I know for, for me, when I was growing up, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to sing. Um, but I was told a lot that you won't make money like that. So what do you really want to do? Right. You have conversations like that. So if kids say, I want to be an artist. OK, that's great. But artists don't make money. So what do you really want to do? We get all these type of messages when we're young that says that joy is not sustainable. It can, will not sustain you and that your joy is dangerous. It will make you poor or it will make you struggle or it will make you suffer. And all these messages we get out there like the struggling artist, right? You have all of these kind of tropes and, and paradigms of things out there that make you believe that, that living a life of joy is synonymous to suffering. And so when you're a kid and you hear that, what, you, what, what that goes into your head is I'm not going to pursue my life that way. Right. So I'm going to pursue instead. I don't want to suffer. I don't want the pain of that. So instead, I'm going to go do something else that actually ends up causing your suffering and ends up draining the joy from you. Right. Um, but that's kind of there are so many messages and mixed messages we get as kids that uh, and, and in our early development stages that make us believe that joy does, belongs in the margins instead of at the center of the page of our lives, right? And that's what I want to, if anything about my message, I want to reiterate, kind of return our focus to and heal that false premise um, to return our focus to joy is supposed to be the center of your life. It's supposed to be the main focus of every day. And so, the, so now getting to the real question, right? Which is what are my suggestions for people who don't know um, what their passions are, what their joy is. So it's very similar to uh, the process of when you're trying to discover your true self. And again, a part of discovering your true self is really to get connected to um, what you enjoy, because that's who you really are. That's literally guidance to, trying to help you to understand who you really are as a soul. Um, 
but just like the the path to your true self is not out there right it's not necessarily something you need to go discover or something you need to find because it's not out there you are already your true self is in here it's just it's been covered up right it's been covered up with a lot of stuff that's not you and so in order to find to just to really become your true self the path to that is to take off all of the parts of you that are not you right to to take all the stuff that that doesn't is not the true you it is is not serve the true you or nourish the true you you start to remove that type of stuff from your life and then the real you starts to rise up from that because it was just kind of covered like almost as if all of this stuff is blankets you know kind of covering over the true self and when you remove the blankets that are not the true self the true self just kind of stands up and breathes the same thing with happens with joy right it's not that your joy is out there and you need to find it or that you lost it or anything like that it's just been covered up and this is what i found in my own journey uh reconnecting to my own joy and re and starting to build a life based in joy is that you don't it's not that you don't have a clue about what your joys are because i promise you do right um it's just they've been so covered up that you don't remember them and that um, the process to rediscovering what your passions are is to remove everything from your life that doesn't bring you a sense of joy so what i mean by that is the process to finding out to, to reconnecting to joy and to finding discovering really discovering what your purpose is I mean, what your passion is is to get out a piece of paper and pen and make a list of all the things you're doing that you don't enjoy that are stressful for you that are draining for you that leave you feeling depleted when you engage in them like what kind of relationships do you have uh, where when you talk with certain people or you hang out with them, you leave feeling depleted or drained or you just don't really enjoy being around them. Make a list. Write those people's names down. Write those situations down. Your work. Do you enjoy the type of work you're doing or does it stress you out? Does it make you feel like you're suppressing some part of yourself? Do you not feel like you can be your full self in that work? Like write that down. Um, are you saying yes to a lot of things that you really deep down know you want to say no to? You know, are you are you helping out more than what you feel? Are you overwhelmed? Um, write all of these things down, like literally get a piece of paper and a pen and, and take notice. It's not going to all come clear to you kind of in one sitting. Really, if you take a week or two to do this, it's, it's kind of the best time to do it. But look over it for, for a week and every day. Take notice of things that you're doing that you really don't enjoy. Don't judge yourself for this. Don't nobody else is going to look at this. So give yourself the freedom to do it and just sit down and write this out, like literally write down all of this out. And once you've gotten this down and you take you can take a look at all of the things you've been doing in your life. So I had to do this for me. Right. And I was looking at all the things that I, I was doing in my life that I did enjoy, like. A lot of, I had a lot of surface conversations. This is kind of something that came up for me. I was doing a lot of surface conversations in my life, a lot of talking about the news or sports or things like that. And I actually hate that. That drains me to no end. It's not that anything's wrong with that for people who enjoy that, but that's not my joy. It drains me. What actually I really wanted to do was have soulful and deep conversations. I wanted to talk about what people's dreams were. You know, I wanted to talk about with the people in my life, like what they were discovering about themselves. What were they, what were they trying to manifest? What were they healing? I wanted to have deep level conversations. I didn't just want to have very surface level conversations and having surface conversations more than like 30 seconds drained me. It, it really left me feeling depleted. That was something that was going on. The type of work that I was doing at the time, especially when I was at the height of my sickness and my illness, I didn't enjoy it. It wasn't, it wasn't something that, that I was very excited about. I wasn't excited every morning to wake up and do it, right? So I wrote that down on the list. Um, there were certain things in my house that I wasn't excited about, like how my house was structured. Um, and you look at all of that stuff when you get the list and then you and then once you make a list and you read it to yourself out loud to yourself, you make the decision that you're going to stop doing these things. You're going to stop doing these things. Right. You're going to remove these from your life. You're going to let go of them. You're going to stop engaging in them. You're going to stop behaving like this, whatever it is that um, you that looks like that is you don't enjoy that drains you and leaves you a sense of depletion and leaves you feeling a sense of stress or overwhelm. 
remove it from your life. And this is actually taking a blanket off because what, what, how the soul works is it's not that you need to try and add things on to discover, you know, your joys. Cause you, again, you are a joy based being. That is literally what the soul is. You are made of joy. You are made of passion. It's not something outside of you that you need to go and grab and get. It's something you need to let come through you. And so when you start to remove and so how this life work is, your soul can only express through your life, which is your joys and your passions. They'll only become clear and they'll only express through your life when you have stopped suppressing them, right? So get everything out of the way that is suppressing your joy and the clarity of your passion. So everything that you're doing that you don't enjoy, that's stressing out, once you start to remove that, you'll start to see you take one layer off and all of a sudden it, co- it becomes super clear. Something comes comes up and it becomes clear. This was such the case for me. As soon as I started um, letting go of the things that drained me and that weren't um, that I wasn't passionate about and that I wasn't excited about, like when I started to leave the certain jobs that I was doing that I wasn't excited about, when I when I let go of the relationships I was in that didn't. Um, fulfill me and th- that um, were draining me when I stopped doing certain activities just because I felt a sense of obligation and responsibility instead of because I was really excited about them. All of a sudden, what started to come up in my head were ideas of things that I would rather do instead, right? And these ideas did not come because I was trying to, uh, just like everybody else does, we try to we try to think, you know, I've got this whole life because again, you have it's kind of like a cup, right? If you and the cup can only hold so much. Right. It can only if I had a cup here, the cup can only hold so much, you know, liquid. If I pour water in it, it can only hold so much water. Um, and if that cup is full, then it's full. Right. And so if we keep stuffing stuff in the cup, it just gets it's full. And if you want to put if you want some more something else to drink in the cup, first, you have to get out of the cup what's filling it up. So if your life is full of things, and this is you, I can promise you this is what's going on. If you're not clear about what your passions are, your joy are, it's because your life is filled with um, things that you're not passionate about and you're and that don't breathe joy. And so you can't get any clarity on what does bring you joy because your cup is so, your mind is so clattered and chattered full of stuff that you don't enjoy. You got to get at that out first. So you pull the first step is to pull all of that out. And what you'll find is all of a sudden your mind is clear, is clearer and your energy is clearer. And all of a sudden you start to discover what you actually do like. Right. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't happen the other way. You kind of have to create a vacuum. Right. You create a vacuum, a kind of an energetic vacuum within yourself. And you say, OK, I'm going to empty out. And I'm, first, I need to get rid of I'm kind of clearing and detoxing and decluttering all the stuff that is not joy based. So I'm, let me remove that. And once you do, the universe adhorbs the vacuum. And so it brings in the joy you, with the because you're doing the intention of discovering what my passions and my joy are. I'm removing everything that's not that. And then all of a sudden you get clarity about, oh, I'd really like to do this instead. Or, oh, I really forgot. I really enjoy doing this. Or let me go over here and hang out with these people. Or um, instead of this type of work, I think I might really like this type of work. I'm really starting to get excited about that. That's how you discover your joy. And that's how you discover um your passions and that's how you start that's the first step that's my first suggestion in starting to build a life of joy and passion is to remove the stuff from your life that's not and then you allow your soul to speak you allow it to start to stand up and breathe you take the covers off of it and it starts to stand up it breathes and it starts to guide you towards what's actually your joy and what your passions are but it does not do that and what most of us try to do is we try to find we try to to uh, connect to our passions and our joy when we have a whole bunch of this other mess, this whole bunch of this other shit really covering um, ourselves. And we're trying to see through all of that, right? And the first thing to do is just take all of that off. And as soon as you take all of that off, it's almost as if you have, a, you know, you've got glasses on and there's a lot of mud on your glasses and you're asking me, you know, how do I see clearly out of these glasses? Well, the way to see clearly out of the glasses is to take the mud off the glasses and then you'll see where you want to go. Right. So that's the very same thing here. You in order to reconnect to your passions and your joy, you've got to disconnect 
right? In order to reconnect to your passions and your joy, you've got to disconnect from everything you're doing that doesn't feel joyous, that doesn't make you feel good, that doesn't. And that's what joy basically is. It's, it's, it's what feels good. It feels like fun. It feels like pleasure. It feels like excitement, right? It feels like exhilaration. You know, whatever you're doing that doesn't feel like that, if it feels frustrating, if it feels um, sad, if it feels draining and depleting or overwhelming or obligation, that's the stuff to let go of. And when you let go of that, your passions will begin to stand up and they'll be very clear. They'll start to almost like blink and they'll say, come over here, do this. Remember, instead of doing that, do this instead. Um, now that you're no longer doing this, Remember, you really enjoy doing this, right? So it's like, you know, you, you'll find out all of a sudden, oh, I, I forgot I love to paint and I haven't painted in 10 years, right? And so then all of a sudden you start to paint and you discover that's what you really want to do with your life or you haven't sung or you wanted to write and you haven't been writing because you've been over here working this other job and you didn't have time to write, right? And that's, you know, that's how this works. So I hope this has helped you all out a little bit. Um, I see several of you all here, so hey, you all. And I hope this has helped you out a little bit. Again, I'm my, I'll am my i be doing live videos every week where I'm going to be um, answering your questions. I get a lot of questions from you all every week about different things and different topics as it pertains to uh, loving yourself, uh, healing yourself, living a life of love and joy, uh, and also, you know, expressing more of your soul in your life. So... Uh, any of your questions you have about any of that stuff, you can post them here under this video uh, and I'll try to respond to them in videos coming up soon. I've got a lot of questions still to go <laughs> to respond to, uh, but I will be doing that. And just to know, I do have a lot coming up. I know um, I didn't do any live events in 2018. I got um, a very intuitive message, very strong one from my guides uh, in January of this year to sit back this year uh, and get some awareness about what my message really is and to restructure and refocus my work. And so that's what I've been doing most of 2018. So I haven't been doing a lot of live events or classes or anything like that. But all that's changing in 2019. I've got so much good stuff coming up for you all. I can't wait to share it as we get closer to when it becomes finished so that I can put it out there. Uh, but just know I love you all. I, I, I want the best for you all. Um, and you're supposed to live a life of joy. You're supposed to live a life of love because love and joy are who you are. And only when you experience more of who you are can your body be truly well? And can you really live a delicious and thriving life like you not only deserve, but like you were naturally intended to experience? Until next time, much love. Bye.